Hello everyone, L.C. Hold here from Your Next, VHS2, amongst others. Just want to tell you to make sure to lock your doors, because the lamb mass might be coming for you, and watch Slasher Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be interviewing L.C. Holt from Your Next. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Glad to have you on the show. Excited. Well, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Uh, so my first question was, do you have any new projects coming up? Oh, I have a lot of new projects. Um, I have two films as an actor coming up. Uh, one called Butcher's Bluff, which is a, a slasher film, filming in Austin, Texas, uh, directed by a guy named William N. Stone. Then I have another movie called uh, On Location, which is shooting a horror film again, which is shooting in Ohio, um, co-starring myself, Damien Maffei from uh, Strangers Pray at Night and Haunt, uh, Cheney Morrow, who is from Haunt and uh, uh, the upcoming Wrong Turn remake, um, Hannah Fearman, who was in Siren, and was in the first VHS movie. I was in the second. So we got a couple of VHS alums there. And, uh, and then beyond that, I'm producing a movie that I wrote, which is supposed to be shooting in January, called Time's Up, which also co-stars Damien Maffei and uh, is also co-produced by him. And then beyond that, I have another book that I'm working on that should come out at the end of the year. Awesome. So, yeah, it's a pretty busy time, but busy is good. I like busy. Right, right. Yeah, Damien Maffei, I actually interviewed him a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. um, and he was also talking about Time's Up. And I was looking for interviews with him to kind of get to know what questions have already been asked, and then I stumbled upon your interview, which yes. also made me get in touch with you to interview you for the channel, which is kind of cool that you mentioned yeah. it now. Yeah, it he's, does you um, like a community because the people that worked on The Strangers 2 also kind of worked on Han, now Wrong Turn, and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so how did you get the job of playing Lamp Mask in Your Next? Well, um, that movie came about because when I, when I was younger, uh, in college, I was doing a lot of um, theater. And I met, um, I had a friend who was in the same, around the same age range as I was, named Trey Wingard, found out that his younger brother, like me, liked to make films. Because in college, I made like a, a, a short film every semester, wrote them, directed them, appeared in them. And uh, I found out Trey's little brother, Adam Wingard, was wanting to make films. And he had gone to film school. Well, eventually Adam came to the college where I was doing all this theater and, inter and uh, auditioned an entire troupe of actors, the whole theater company that I worked with, for this movie he did, which was eventually called Homesick, which is real slasher, you know, gore fest, surrealistic, shot on 16 millimeter film that co-starred uh, Bill Mosley and the late Tommy Tolles. Uh, and I got a part in this movie, along with actually my roommate in college, who was also an actor, got, was in the movie too, playing one of the drug dealers. And that's the first horror film I did. And then after that, me and Adam did another movie called Pop Skull. And then after Pop Skull, um, you know, I, I did this film that I wasn't very proud of, and I just sort of stepped away from acting for a few years, actually. And then Adam called me up and said, you know, we got another film going and I have this part for you. And it turned out that the film was your next and that was the part he wanted me to play. And uh, so he sent me a script and I was like, yeah, that's great. Because if there was any movie I would do, it would be one directed by Adam at that point. Because I was kind of out of, out of it um, after the experience on that other film. And, uh, so yeah, that's how your next came about. And then we were just off and running. Next thing you know, I was in Missouri with a lamb mask on shooting. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Sounds cool because usually it's just like an audition and stuff, but you actually have some history with the director. I know. 
Um, yeah, we've I've known him since he was uh, he was 19. I'm a little bit older than him, but I was about 20, 21 when we first met. And we did a lot of short films in between Homesick and Pop Skull, and because uh, he's from the same home state and that I am. Uh, and now you know he's directing uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. So that's pretty awesome. Good. Yeah, pretty good. You really got to see him grow. Yes, yes. He's uh, he's one of those people that. With Adam, I always knew he was incredibly talented from when I first met him. Sometimes you just get that impression. And we hit right. it off, he and I hit it off, and we have a great working relationship. It doesn't involve a lot of communication or anything. I mean, it's very easy to work with each other. And I think that's because we've known each other for so long. Right, yeah. Um, so what was the most fun scene to film in your next uh, the scene that most people ask me about, and I guess it has sort of become fun because of the story behind it, is the scene where I flipped the table. Uh, people love that scene, man. Uh, and I can see why, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is a sort of a story behind that. I mean, I was, there was a stuntman on that movie who was really looking to do some of my stunts. And I did all the stunts in the movie, primarily because I didn't feel like there was any reason that I shouldn't. I mean, there was not. There's a scene in the movie where Sharni, Sharni Vincent, uh, jumps out the window. I mean, obviously they're not going to let Sharni jump out the window. So, a stunt woman did that. It's actually the same stunt woman I punched through the uh, sliding glass door. <laughs> she she did all the female stunts in the movie. Right. Uh, a, a very talented stunt woman named Renee Moneymaker. His her actual name is Renee Moneymaker. <laughs> um, but yeah, but and so there was, a, but there was a male stuntman there, and he was sort of the coordinator, and he really wanted to do some of my stunts, and he kept going around saying, you know, this table flip, that's a really heavy table. I think you might need a professional to do this, telling everybody but me that, you know. And I just heard that, and I was like, hell no, he's not playing that. that no, I'm flipping the table. So, um, so it came time to do it. You know, I was pumped up with like anger and rage and showing this stunt guy what, you know, what real actors can do. So I got down and I flipped that table with all of my anger, flipped it totally over, not on the side. I was supposed to flip it on its side. I actually flipped it all the way. So it was, <laughs> you know, which the art department loved because they didn't have to reset all the plates and the food and everything every day because the table hit it. So right. I, ma I made a few friends in the art department that day, too. <laughs> I don't know about the stuntman. I don't know if I made friends with him. Right. <laughs> Are you still in touch with uh, the stuntman that wanted to do that? No. No. <laughs> well, I, I guess I we now know why. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, not. I don't have any animosity. I mean, he's a very talented guy. He, he did uh, the stunts on Blade. He did all the... Um, the sword play that Stephen Dorff did in that movie kind of looks like Stephen Dorff. So he stunt doubled him, you know, and, uh, and he's done a lot of movies. He's a very good stunt man. But I, if you would, I'm, I have a certain body type that's, I mean, you know, I'm kind of very tall and very lean and this guy was not, he was more like Stephen Dorff. So, right. um, if you saw him in the outfit, I think you would have been able to tell. Right. Uh, yeah. The difference. But, and who doesn't want to flip a table over with plates and stuff, right? <laughs> oh, man, I mean, I want to do I want to do as much as I can. Now, again, if it came down to jumping through a, a second story window, I'm more than happy to let somebody do that. But I didn't have to do anything like that, so I just did everything. Awesome. Uh, and what's the best behind the scenes story from your next? You can tell. Oh, there are so many of them. Let me think. I do remember. The day that, uh, God, there's so many of them. Well, there's one that's that's good. I don't know that I've told this one too often. There's a scene, um, you know, where I come through the window and Sharni has set up two boards with nails, and the first is like a decoy. Oh, yeah. See that. And then so I'm like, oh, I got her. And so then I step down on the other one, which, you know, is the one that goes through my foot. And, and then I'm walking around with the foot, with the board stuck to my foot. Uh, yelling and calling her all kinds of names. Uh, I remember when we shot that, I was supposed to fall to the floor, uh, you know, with the board stuck to my foot and try to pry it off. And 
So they had the real board with nails in it, the other board, the decor, the decoy board down there. And right before we were going to shoot my fall backwards, they were like, uh, the, the first AD said, you know, should we take the board with the nails in it off the floor? And they're like, yeah, let's replace that with the board that has the foam nails in it. So, and it's a good thing because first take, I went straight down on the foam nails. I would have had all those real nails up my ass. Oh, man. <laughs> if, if, if that great AD had not replaced the board with, with, foam, with the foam ones. So I, I dodged a bullet there because uh, that would not have been fun. Right, uh, right. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's one story. Man, there are so many stories from that set. We, I was there a month. It was a long, it was a long shoot for me. I, I didn't shoot every night, but I was there a month. Um, had a lot of fun shooting the scene where I was choking the late great Nick Tucci up against the wall, uh, who played Felix. Uh, great, great actor. Lost him way too soon. He was a great guy. Um, had a lot of fun with that scene, though. Those scenes with him and Wendy Glenn and uh, and Lane Hughes, the fox mask. Sounds like you just had a ton of fun behind the scenes. I think it was a lot of, because uh, we were all in that house. I mean, the house is where we shot. It was also where the production studios were. All the producers had offices on in the on the top floor up in the attic, um, which you got through through the secret passage and this like spiral staircase that went up. <laughs> it was the house was really gothic. It's it's a multi million dollar house that's actually right on the edge of a golf course, uh, though you can't see the golf course in the movie. Uh, and downstairs in the cellar, which is where they shot the scene where um, the fox mask gets his head banged in by the oh, right. by Sharni. Um, Fun story there. That's actually Adam Wingard banging uh, the fox mass's head because Sharni didn't want to hit him that hard, and Adam was like, "I'll hit him that hard." And just start <laughs> with that board. Um, but down in the basements where all the uh, effects guys were, great effects guys, Mike Strain and his crew did a wonderful job on that. Um, but yeah, yeah, everything was right there. So we were like kind of a there was sort of a family atmosphere all living together in the same hotel and then we were all in that house together and that's pretty much where how we lived all month so you know you do kind of get close to people and it becomes kind of a fun experience you know that's great yeah it's, it's better to work with people that you really like instead of working with people that you don't like at all yeah yeah i mean we all went to see i remember scream 4 came out in the theaters and a lot of us went to see that so we would like do stuff off the set you know as well that's great um now i might better ask this to like a producer or something but will there be a your next two there was supposed to be a your next two and a your next three originally this was supposed to be the first in a trilogy of movies um I, I don't know if there's going to be a your next two. I've talked to Simon Barrett about it, who is the writer producer, and he also played my brother in the movie. Um, I don't think there's going to be a your next two. I think if there was, it would have happened already. Right. Um, but there was a whole story, and Simon has told it publicly. So I mean, it's no big uh, secret anymore. Is that you know it was supposed to be, Sharni was went to prison because she was. Uh, convicted of all the murders in the first movie. And and I went to a VA hospital, having been stabbed in the head. And for the, like a year or two, I'm just in this hospital in a vegetative state, you know, kind of drooling and whatever. And then you find out eventually that I'm putting on an act and that I'm really not in a vegetative state, though I am crazy, even crazier from the wound to my head. And I also can't feel pain anymore because of the injury. So I bust out of the uh, hospital, get together some more animals. And when they're transporting Sharni on a prison bus, uh, we sabotage the bus. All the female pr prisoners run out into the woods and then we hunt them through the woods. And that was going to be this, the plot of Your Next Two. And then Your Next Three was going to take place in the Australian outback. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that would have been a hell of a trilogy if we had gotten to do all that. Right, yeah. But, but the plot for, uh, for Your Next 2 sounds really cool. 
Yes, and it was going to be directed by the. You, do you know the movie The Raid? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. That was the guy who was going to direct it, and awesome. Adam went. Adam was going to produce it, and Simon was going to produce it and write it. Yeah, I think it's great that you would have come back uh, as Lamb Mask. That yeah, would that, have been cool. That was the idea. That was the idea. That's why they didn't chop my head off in the movie because in, <laughs> in the original script, my my character got his head chopped off. Oh right, and yeah. At the and uh, you know when we were shooting it, the producers were like, Man, "Do we really want to kill all the the bad guys? Because we might do a sequel." And in the original script, also Sharni got shot in the head and and killed at the end by the cop. What and I wasn't shot in the arm. And they were like, well, are we sure we want to kill her? Because there might be a sequel, you know, that sort of thing. So we were sort of kept alive and or, or at least given lesser injuries right. with the idea to do a sequel, you know. Uh, do you know why they never made a second one? Or at least not yet? Uh, I don't know. I mean, look, if they want to make a second one, I would love to. Absolutely love to. Um, especially if Adam was directing it and Simon was writing it. And of course, if Charney was in it, I mean, that would be a big thing for me. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know. These things, these weird things happen. You know, sometimes you just kind of go off and you find other projects and maybe the 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 um, fire you had for the previous thing kind of dies off a little bit. I think everyone just sort of went their own way after that movie. You know, and Adam did Blair Witch uh, and he did uh, Death Note. And then he did. And now he's doing the the Kong versus Godzilla. So I don't know. Um, it's a good question. And it might still happen right. one day. It won't be that story because we've already talked about that story. You know, right. Simon's <laughs> talked about it. I've talked about it. So it would be a totally different story. Um, but I don't know. I mean, maybe one day they'll just remake the movie or something, you know. And if that happens, I, I'm not going to be in it, you know. So. Yeah, why not? Well, I don't know. They usually don't bring back the original actors for a remake. Right. I mean, I would do it as long as it's not like I'm 60 years old. You know, I don't know if I could do it at 60. But I mean, if I was still uh, able, I would definitely do it. But generally with reboots and remakes, you know, they don't like bringing back the original actors. Yeah, definitely. I thought maybe you just didn't want to do it yourself. Uh... No, I mean, I, I'm not against it. I'm definitely not against it. But again, I would love it if like Adam was involved and Simon and because right. to me, it's their baby, you know, it's kind of their creation. Yeah, exactly. I got you. Um, and if there was any other horror character, good guy or bad guy, uh, you could play, who would it be? Mm, I wouldn't mind giving Freddy Krueger a try. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's tough. That's a man. one. That's a tough one to, that's tough shoes to fill. Um, yeah. I've always said, now, the thing about this is, it's not if it was a remake, okay? If we could do a hypothetical go back in time type situation, I don't want them to remake The Exorcist, but I would have loved to have played Father Karras in The Exorcist. That's like an all-time role I would love to have played. Because I, I always wanted to play like that sort of a priest character, you know? I think I could really pull off the whole priest outfit. Yeah, um, me too. I did yeah, you say that. I would love to do that, but not as a remake. You know, I want it to be that movie. So we're talking right. purely we're, we're talking purely hypothetical now. So, but yeah, I mean, those are the two that pop to mind. Though Damien Karras is not really a he's not really a villain. Right, but good guy or bad guy. So I guess yeah. that one uh, fits the good guy part. Um, and then what are some of your own favorite films? Uh, you mean horror films or just in general? Yeah, mostly horror. Uh, number one is The Exorcist. Love The Exorcist. Um, I've been talking a lot about the Scream films, and I do really enjoy those films because those films were made for like my age. Like when I was a teenager, like those characters were, those films were coming out, you know, so that was like my generation's thing. Um I'm a big fan of, of um, oh man, so many. There, there's some obscure movies I love, like the ones that uh, Christopher Lee and uh, Peter Cushing. If it has Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in it, chances are I've seen it and I like it. Because <laughs> uh, I'm a huge fan of those guys. To me, those guys were like the Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau of horror, you know. Right. When you got two of them together in something, 
it was it was always good. Uh, but yeah, I, I love those old uh, films. Um, God, there's just so many. I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, I really like a lot. Um, and Halloween, you know, I really like the first two Halloween movies. Yeah, yeah, those and are I, classics. I see your shirt there, and I have to say I like that right. shirt. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Thank that, you. But the first, I mean, I have to be honest with you, the first two is kind of what I like. And uh, I'm not huge into, it's sort of like Friday the 13th for me. For Friday the 13th, it's like one, two, and four I really like. But I, I just have never gotten into the other ones, you know. Not and, even uh, the sixth one, Jason Lives? No, I didn't really, I didn't really get into that one. No, it was a little too com comedic for me. Right, know? right. But I really like one, two, and four. And it's not that I hate three, it's just three's got some real clunky acting in it. You right. know? <laughs> I mean, not, and not from the supporting characters either. No, some of the supporting the main characters. main ones. Yeah, some of the main ones in that, it's like, holy moly. But, you know, wh whatever, whatever. Right, um, right. <laughs> but... You know, Halloween one and two, really love those two. Right, and those I can classics. I can watch some of the other ones, but I really like those first two. Yeah, they're they're really good back to back watches as well. Because if you watch them back to back, you're like it's the same movie. You know, exactly. just one long movie. And that's why that may be part of why I like them so much is because they do just bleed into one another, and it's one night. You know, it's just the one night this horrible thing happened to her. And right. it's, it's not as if, you know, it just kept coming back and back and back and back. It was just this one horrible night. I like that that element of it. Yeah, which I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to go with Halloween Kills and Ends. Because Halloween Kills is probably, I think it's the same night. I think that's actually confirmed. But how is yeah. Halloween Ends going to be? Is that going to be the 1st of November or, or oh. how is that going to go, right? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Uh, I don't know. Is, so Halloween Kills is going to be the same night? I think so. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'll, I'll definitely watch them. I saw Halloween 2018 in the theater. Um, and I did. I liked it for the most part, with some little gripes here and there. But I did. I liked it a hell of a lot better than some of those sequels. I'll tell you that. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah. I'm interested to see, you know. Me too. Me too. You know what I you know what I wish had happened though? I wish Jamie Lee Curtis had only come back for Halloween 2018. Right, and then just killed off and then in Halloween kills just stand alone? No, no, I mean she could be in those. I just mean if 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 Halloween H2O hadn't been made, then it would have been all the more exciting to see her. Oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she had already kind of come back twice. Exactly. You know? So it kind of undercut the excitement of seeing her come back yet again. But, like, again, if we're going into a hypothetical world, if you could have just gone, skipped over H2O, which I liked at the time, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not hating on H2O. I'm just saying I think it would have been better if she had just waited to Halloween 2018. Exactly. That would have been knew? really exciting. Who knew that was ever going to happen, so. Right, right. So I remember back in... 2011, I think it hit theaters here. Uh, when Your Next was coming out, I was I was just <laughs> I was at a time I must have been like eight, and I was looking at my local cinema's website for movies I could watch, and I saw Your Next, and you know I was eight year old, so I was curious to see what those masks were all, all about, and I was so scared of those masks, huh. and so I want to ask you, what are some of your own fears? My own fears. You know, one of my biggest fears before I made this movie was home invasion. Oh, I used, really? Yes. I used to, when I was younger, like when I was a teenager uh, or even younger than that, I used to be terrified that someone would break into the house at night while I was asleep. And because uh, when I was growing up, I did not like we were not wealthy or anything. We actually went through times of not having a lot of money at all. And th there were times when our doors didn't have locks on them the outside doors to the house. So we would have to prop a chair underneath the doorknob. And I remember one night staying home alone and I didn't prop the chair underneath the doorknob. And I woke up in the night to the sound of the back door creaking open. And I woke up and I looked through the door and I could see the light from the outside coming in. And I remember thinking, somebody's in the house. And uh, come to find out I went and I checked 
and it was just the wind or something had blown it open. Um, so those sorts of fears I had. Ironically enough, though, after I've done your next, don't worry about that at all. Oh, I think, really? I think I just had to be the person breaking in. And then once I got that out of my system, I'm like, oh, all right, I can take anybody now. All right. <laughs> I got a crossbow over here. I'm fine. You know. Man, that's cool. So that's a huge coincidence that the wind just opened it. And that must have been terrifying finding no one at all. Yeah, it was pretty creepy. It was pretty creepy. I mean, we, we lived in some strange kind of creepy houses, one of which I think that other people thought were haunted. I've never seen a ghost or anything like that. But uh, other people said it was. So, yeah, my childhood was full of strange, like, home invasion and supernatural fears. You know, I grew up watching shows like Unsolved Mysteries. And uh, what, what you learn from Unsolved Mysteries is that you were either going to be kidnapped, murdered by a satanic <laughs> cult, or abducted by aliens, you know. Right. <laughs> so that was sort of the fears of my childhood. Oh, that's awesome. So um, do you have any final words for the interview? No, well, I had a great time, man. I had a great Thank time. You. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, you're right there. Go check out your next if you have not yet for some reason. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. You're pissing me off, Roger. It's gonna be wild tonight.